The newly sworn in governor of Ekiti State, Mr. Biodun Oyebanji, has rolled out six point agenda to further bring economic prosperity and governance to the people of the state. Oyebanji, shortly after he was sworn in by the chief judge of Ekiti, Justice John Adeye, said that his six point developmental agenda would focus on youth development and job creation. Others are human capital development, agriculture, and rural development, even infrastructure industrialization, arts, culture, and tourism, as well as good governance. The governor said that his vision for the state was for it to be a land of prosperity, opportunity, peace, progress, and a land which transformed people and for communities to reap the fruits of the labor in dignity, good health, and safety. Oyebanji said the six-point agenda was carefully selected based on his experience in the public and private sectors coupled with the yearnings of the masses to improve the status of the state. He said the vision uh, to be actualized there was no was a need to focus on a roadmap to get there, urging the people to be partners in progress. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ifedayo Iyanuwura. He's the uh, former governorship candidate, National Rescue Movement, and he is, of course, the IPAC chairman in Ekiti State. And we're also being joined by Ulufemi Lawson. He's a pro-democracy activist. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to be with your host. Great. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Yanivura. This is, of course, um, 24 hours of the governor in um, office, of course, after him being sworn in. Let's talk about the person of Mr. Uyebanji and um, the task that is ahead of him in Ekiti State. Uh, well, uh, as regards the Excellency Biotun Uyebanji, uh, let me say especially that uh, it is to have him as the newly inaugurated governor of the state. And I must say that uh, he's one of us at home. He's one of those who believe so much that have grown up in the state. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, we are aware that uh, he has served the capacity of SA, the governor, Chief of staff to the governor, uh, SNC to the governor, and also a commissioner at this time in the state. So we do something that he knows the terrain of the state and is also a well known person. So, regarding his agenda, does he roll out for us as regards his plans to move the state forward? Uh, we believe so much that is achievable because it's a uh, if the table fact that he knows the terrain of the state. And if you have to look into the agenda that he rolls out, as part of it, he, he listed new development and job creation. His view, creating employment and income generating opportunities for the people of the state will be a critical component of his administration, which is applauded. Then, and on record, it is set as the second lowest number of out of school children in the country. The uh, the OEPG, the new excellency, so therefore introduced to my capital development as part of the six point agenda as to build on the progress made by the previous administration by bringing that number as close to zero as possible, making sure that our children are not just in school but are also learning. So this also is uh, is nothing other than seen as a, 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 a round peg in a round hole. Then it goes on to introduce agricultural and rural development as part of the agenda. As part of the system agenda, according to Mr. Governor, agriculture is one of the main contributors to the economy. He vowed to develop the sector further by attracting more investment in a great distance to deepen our processing capacity of both stable and cash crops, which will not only provide the people of the state with security, but will help Nigeria go its non oil export. Then we talk about the infrastructure and industrialization, which, according to him, we accelerate the development of key infrastructure that is critical to our economic development, which will have a vast impact on the state progress. We talk about health and culture and tourism as a means of diversifying our economy. Then listed good governance as part of the agenda, which will be 
one one that will bring the affirmation together and a pillar that ensures taking adequate care of our civil service to ensure that the residents are safe and secure, operating with transparency and best practices, collaborating with the highest right actors to implement the state of allotment plan, and also as a reminder that the administration will be accountable to good people of the state. We are not doubting all this because we believe in all the terrain. Is for more is part of us to grow up in the state. We are optimistic that we will introduce a homegrown democratic governance, which of course will be Yanni for the void of capital flight. He has he has proved a point. In this uh, in this way, after he has been elected as the governor of the before being inaugurated, Governor Ebanyi will be the first of its kind. That will not leave a state after being elected to travel abroad. He was within a state. If he leaves a city or he travel out of a state, he go he goes out for consultation to meet with a people living outside the city, trying to bring them back home to also contribute their quota of development of the we never had a travel to UK, to the United States of America, to whatever other of the country, say you want to go and take the rest. That tells that we are secured economically, socially. And we have okay. confidence that this government will be devoid of capital flight. All right, let me bring Mr. Lawson into the conversation. I'm still talking about the task that is ahead of Governor Yibanji. Um, we One of the first things he did was to freeze the government's accounts. Now, secondly, the issue of continuity, because you know government is supposed to be a continuum, but in Nigeria we see governors who come in and promise that they would, you know, continue from where their predecessors stopped, but half the time it's a struggle because they also want to start their own projects and put a name on it. Uh, do you see Oyebanji following in the footsteps of Governor Fayemi? Uh, I think that um, we're losing your connection, unfortunately. I'm going to go back to Mr. Yanuwura until we're able to correct your audio. Mr. Yanuwura, same question to you. Um, do you see him continuing in the footsteps of Coyote Fire Me and, of course, um, the issue of the frozen accounts? Uh, well, uh, as regards uh, the newly inaugurated governor, uh, the governor of the other by the relationship with the former governor, Dr. Kawade Fayemi. We cannot rule out the fact that um, uh, uh, Governor Oye Banji is one of the key persons of the former governor. And uh, remember, I said he was once a commissioner in the state. He was a commissioner under the first government of former governor Kao de Fayemi. And he started again as executive of the state government under the same government of Dr. Kao de Fayemi. So, at the position of SSG in a state is number three within the SEC. After the governor, the deputy governor, then we'll be talking about the secretaries of the state government. So many policies will be in togetherness to decide on. So, in, 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 so therefore, we are not expecting OEA Banji to work outside Dr. Kao de Fayemi's plan for it. Like what he said, let me quote him. He said he will wear his shoe. He will, he will wear his own shoe, but for the part of his predecessor. That tells that he has his mind. But he believes so much in the part told by his predecessor, Mr. Kokao de Fayemi. So we are not expecting him to, to do anything contrary to the plans of uh, Governor de Fayemi. But the only thing which we are trying to yearn. It's supposed to be our yarn is, is that we should try and study where Dr. Carl De Fayemi scores less than 10% of, of scores. 
you should try and study where the of the the fire means failed. And now try and work on this with his own idea to have a score to have a pass card. So you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the governor or Ebanji is an independent individual, independent minded individual. Which of course we have a confidence in him that we throw his, that that we put his own shoe on, on and making sure that whatever operation is backing on his own government, he should have it at the back of his mind that he will be bearing his own name and not the name of the Gokar of the Fire Um I'm I'm most interested in you know the aftermath of the elections. Now we know how seemingly divisive that election was. Um, will Governor Oyebanji be a governor who would govern all and sundry? In other words, reach out even to the opposition and all those who, um, you know, he beat at the polls. Uh, is this going to be a very inclusive government, a government that will bring peace to the people of Ekiti, knowing what transpired during, before, during and after the elections? Again, um, the governor has also talked about, you know, areas that he intends to expand on infrastructure, agriculture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you, as an Ekiti person, what do you think Ekiti State needs the most right now? I've heard you talk about the ten percent, where you know Governor Fayemi scored low, that he needs to, you know, try to do something to better that. But as we speak right now, what do you think Ekiti people need the most, and where should should that be where Governor Yebanji should start um, his governance from? Yes, uh, honestly now, if the people need human development, which of course is part of the six point agenda. And we cannot rule out the fact that if the people is their need of infrastructure and industrialization, it's not a part of the agenda of Mr. Governor. So, all we need now is to Support him in our prayers. We forgot to give him the wisdom to perform brilliantly in office. He has promised all youth development and job creation. He has promised all agriculture and rural development. He has promised all human capital development. He has also promised us infrastructure and industrialization. He also promised us how to diversify our economy through hard culture and tourism. You see, you know about this, the city needs all. And we believe that before he can come out to all of this spread agenda, he must have taken the out of time to study the challenges facing the state. Presently now we have issues with roads. And it has been captured his agenda. Infrastructure and industrialization. You cannot embark on that without taking up roads. So, in all of his things, agenda, we are aware that he must have studied patiently the situation of the city before coming out to propose solution to it. So, all he needs from us is just to see how to be praying for him, for God to give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to perform freelance and wonderfully well in office and to make sure that every possible distractions that whoever dare to come on his way is defeated. Lawson, hopefully he can hear me better now. Mr. Lawson, can you hear me? Mr. Lawson, can you hear me? Well, unfortunately, uh, I don't think Mr. Lawson can hear me. Finally, Mr. Yanuwura, let's talk about youth and, of course, the capacity building for these young persons. Every single state in this federation has, of course, in large numbers, young people, most of them out of work, out of school, very idle. Elections are around the corner, and you know what they say about idle minds or idle hands becoming the devil's workshop. What should Governor Yebanji be doing in the area of youth empowerment and, of course, making sure that um, the teeming youth population is um, engaged? And well, uh like I said, if you, follow, if, if you have listened to me as we got his plan for us, the, the, his agenda captured new development and job creation. Only well, everybody that we know 
is a lover of youth. We also know I've that. Always, hold on, Mr. Mr. Yanura, hold on, hold on. Just, just let me get to a point. Um, government cannot necessarily give employment to all of the young people in the state. But what policies can be put in place, from your perspective, to make an enabling environment for these young people to thrive? I'm not asking government to give all the young people jobs because I don't think that that's possible. Can I, can I just again? I'm trying to say that as much as the governor has said that he would, you know, engage a couple of young people with his job creation agenda, he cannot obviously employ all the young people. So what other policies can he put in place to create an enabling environment for these young people to thrive? Uh, well, uh, if I'm not hear you clearly, you you are to know about the plans for the young people in the state on the issue of human capital development. Well, uh, if I must say this, uh, that we have as a governor now, he knows where the two pinches, particularly the young ones, make. And he knows that the problem that is facing is lack of industry, which, of course, his agendas are captured already in the area of infrastructure and industrialization. And again, the Oyeban deal we know, he a teacher because he was once a lecturer here in the Kiki State, one of his, uh, his, at the state university. So that tells that he knows what it takes to be a mentor to mentee. But to somebody who's so, who's so passionate about the growth of the youth, with the little we know about him, is somebody who believes so much in, 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 in capital development. So we, we can only engage this government with prayer for his good reach, good plans to come to pass without any distraction. So as we got any policy so far, he believes he, he believe that he has his plans already. He does also want to work out and see how he will roll it out. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be back in the studio to talk about his 100 days in office and examine all the things that he's been able to do. Um, Mr. Yanewura, I want to say thank you for being part of the conversation. Um, Mr. Lawson, thank you. Unfortunately, um, the connection has not been very friendly to Femi Lawson, but... Uh, Freddie Yanuwa is the former governorship candidate with the National Rescue Movement and is also the IPAC chairman for Ekiti State. And Olufemi Lawson is a pro-democracy activist. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part and of the conversation. Let me quickly correct the notion of thing. Uh, yes. the former IPAC chairman. Okay, you are the former IPAC Please. chairman. Okay. The former IPAC chairman. All right, thank you so much for joining Please. us. All, all right. right. Thank you very much. Great. Well, thank you all for being part of the conversation. That's it on Plus Politics tonight. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening.